There is no such thing as a free meal, is a famous phrase. It comes from two types of people. One, barefaced liars, or two, really, really ignorant people. It is as correct as stating, water is not wet. And it's part of a campaign which has been waged against us for more than a hundred years now. One of the main devices intended to fool us is this one. This is a typical transformer as used in mains power supplies, amplifiers, televisions and so on. It really is intended to fool you into disregarding obvious sources of free energy such as sunlight, rain, wind, gravity and so on. The cunning part of its standard transformer is that it's symmetrical and so it's forced to oppose itself when you try to use it. Because it opposes itself, and only because it opposes itself, it can never be more than 100% efficient. And we're surrounded by ignorant people and liars, both of whom assure us that more than 100% efficiency is impossible. That's ridiculous. It's true for symmetrical transformers, but only for symmetrical transformers. Let's examine the facts. This is how a symmetrical transformer works. When an electrical pulse of input, of input is applied to coil 1, it creates a magnetic wave shown by the blue arrows. That magnetic wave flows through around the magnetic frame and through coil 2. That magnetic wave generates a voltage in coil 2 which is fed to the main load. Unfortunately this only happens when the voltage applied to coil 1 is changing and so a transformer is fed alternating current which changes continuously like this. This is a sine wave and for half of the time the sine wave is positive and half of the time the sine wave is negative. Transformers are always used with this sort of continuously changing voltage. In his 1842 book Manual of Magnetism, Daniel Davis points out that when current flowing through a coil is cut off, it produces a back EMF voltage pulse which can be cascaded through several coils, each coil having the reverse direction current flow through it compared to its neighbours. So it passes from this coil to this one, which is a transformer. It's passed on to the next one, which goes from this one to this one as a transformer. Signals passed on to this one, which goes to this coil, which is a transformer. And it's passed on to the last coil. And every one of those gets energised when this switch, which was closed, is opened. That cuts off the current flowing in coil number one and creates that back EMF voltage spike. The reverse pulse from any coil when it's cut off is very important. And while we can use it very usefully in pulse charging battery circuits such as those from Alex Gore of Russia, it's a major problem for a transformer. In a transformer, that magnetic back EMF pulse runs back through the transformer frame and opposes the operation of coil 1, requiring the input power to have to be boosted to overcome it. That back EMF magnetic flow is shown by the red arrows in this diagram. The larger the current draw from coil 2 to power the load, the larger the input to coil 1 has to be. Now that is a stupid transformer design. Like the flow of electricity, magnetic flow passes along every possible flow path available. The amount of magnetic flow along any path depends on the magnetic resistance of that path. So if the path has a large cross-sectional area and the material is suitable, then major magnetic current will flow through it. Thane Hines has made a home-built asymmetrical transformer and shown that it has a power output which is 39 times greater than its power input. Think about that carefully. 
you have a university professor telling you that a transformer has to have an efficiency less than 100%. And then you have Thane Hines demonstrating his transformer putting out 3,900%. 39 times more power than it's supplied with. What does that tell you about what the university professor says? A good professor is either very ignorant or he's telling deliberate lies. Anyway, let's examine the transformer of Thane Hines. It doesn't look all that much different. We have coils 1 and 2 as before, but now we have an additional output coil 3 and a second load which is powered by coil number 3. As before, we put a power pulse into coil 1 and that causes a magnetic flow, this time in two directions through both of the output coils and that powers both of the loads through voltage generated in coil 2 and coil 3. But the big difference comes with the back EMF pulse which used to op oppose the input to coil 1. That magnetic flow is shown by the red arrows in this diagram. The reverse magnetic flux coming out of coil 2 immediately encounters a junction. The junction in the frame has got one path which is low resistance to magnetic flow and the other path has medium to high resistance. Consequently, most of the unwanted magnetic reverse EMF magnetic flow goes along the outer uh, low flow resistance path. Um, the result of doing that is quite spectacular. Here is Thane, home, Thane Hines's home built transformer. As you can see it's uh, a lash together. The coil 1 resistance is 2.5 ohms and it carries 0.29 watts of power. The coil 2 resistance is 2.9 ohms receiving 0.18 watts of power. Resistive load 1 has 180 ohms receiving 11.25 watts of power. Coil, coil 3 has 2.5 ohms and receives 0.06 watts of power and its resistive load is 1 ohm receiving 0.02 watts of power. Now overall the input power is 0.29 watts and the output power is 11.51 watts. Now that's a coefficient of performance of 39.6 in spite of the very simple transformer construction. Now remember that these are actual bench test measured values. Now that's at very low power levels and raising the power somewhat causes a drop in the performance probably due to the transformer frame needing to be bigger. With an input power of 106.9 milliwatts it produces an output power of 403.3 milliwatts, which is 3.77 times greater. The method used by Thane Hines is not the only way to avoid back EMF feedback, from it avoiding it opposing the input power. An excellent way was produced by Clement Figura, who split the transformer into two parts, and his technique has recently been confirmed by a bench test, which showed that the output current has no effect at all on the input current. This is Thane, this is Clement Figura's arrangement here. You've got seven input electromagnets on this side, seven more input electromagnets on that side, and they're fed alternately with different levels of current. The output coils are seven marked in yellow here. Every single set of green, yellow, green raises the output voltage and Clement ran his house on that arrangement getting 500 volts as the basic output voltage. Also Valery Ivanov of Bulgaria has a design for a transformer which has COP of 2.4 although he does use a magnet. There's the magnet and he has a, an air gap there in the frame so it's not a continuous path and the magnetic flux has to flow across that air gap there. 
Also using a magnet in just a single frame is Lawrence Chung and that has been replicated by an independent uh, forum person with a COP of 1.5. So it's likely that you can get a lot more than 1.5 out of it if you set it up correctly. But the idea is you pulse an input winding that either augments or takes away from the magnetic flux flowing round the magnetic frame uh, due to the permanent magnet. Uh, the AC output coil is wound on the other side and that arrangement gives you an actual power gain. Kilicharo Ahsoka has a 1999 patent on several inventive transformer designs. Again, he's using a magnet in the frame, but this time there are two air gaps in the path to the secondary coil, which is this one here, coil number five. Also, with two magnets and patented two years before the MEG design of Tom Bearden, you've got the two magnets here creating magnetic flows and that essentially is a double version of the previous arrangement with the one frame and one magnet. This one again has got two air gaps uh, between the main frame itself and the output coils and their core. There's also a rather unusual design from him whereby he's got several magnets installed, installed in a circular ring and the arrangement here is that the gap gets bridged on and off as the input coil here is pulsed and the output coil then gives you a much bigger output. So making symmetrical transformers like is commercially done presently is definitely not necessary. If you want these notes they're available under the title transformers.pdf